I feel such energy in spring. It's such a time of renewal. It's such a time of energy, all the bursting of leaves. And I think during that context about people graduating from college and what it must feel like to have this release. So what does it feel like to you to have graduated this year? I'm sure that in some ways it was kind of an out-of-body experience. Uh, the COVID-19 distancing, the difficulty in having graduation programs at all, or exhibitions, and the uncertainty about the economy, about jobs, student loans, 36 million people out of work during this time when you're being released onto the job market, if that's your plan. And besides, what is there out there in the world for an artist or a designer to do? Well, as I think about this year, I think about what it must have been like to graduate when I did in 1963 or 1988 or 2008. I mean, pick a year. What were the aspirations and chances of the grads during those years? I mean, think of it. The Vietnam War, recessions, the Great Recession, and so it goes. So I'm thinking about each period that has its opportunities and its hurdles. And you've entered a profound one during this time. But on the other hand, you've already proven that you're creative and productive at some form of art or design. You have determination. You've got energy. You have a vision and perhaps even a dream. And what this is all about is keeping that flame lit, keeping that light on. It's OK to be scared. Who wasn't as the big door opened to the rest of their lives? I mean, I remember very well when I graduated in 63 that it was the Vietnam War. And what was that going to mean to me? It may be tough to realize your dream, but don't give up. But remain flexible. Remain flexible. Uh, there's a story that I want to tell you about an experience I had when I was an undergrad at college during the summer when I was a lifeguard at this lake community. And we had this dorm we all stayed in, all these uh, male lifeguards together. And we would sit around the table at night and talk about important things, things that mattered to us. I mean, what were we going to do when we graduated? What was our philosophy of life? I remember this one particular very intense discussion. We were all sitting around the dinner table about what was our philosophy. And one of the lifeguards named Arnie, I remember him very well, said, you know, my philosophy is I just let things happen to me. I can't tell you how disturbed I was by that, this passive approach. I mean, what the hell was this guy thinking? More and more I think about it, the more profound I think that message was to let things happen to you as an artist, to be the receiver of the, all of this information. And then with the creative process you have to make a work of art, to make a, a design that actually functions in a way that's toward perfect for the problem. Be observant then, be limber, forget the shoulds. Remember all those shoulds you were taught in class? In one way or another, this is the way this composition must look. This is the way this construction must happen. This is the process you use. Forget the shoulds. Invent your own. The average graduate, by the way, it has been proven, will change careers or jobs five times during their professional lives. Think of it now. Five times you're going to possibly change your job or the way in which you make things or what you do. I personally have had that number of job changes in my life that were profound. And what I brought with me, but what I discovered was also extremely important. As when a painting crashes or a design goes wrong, be prepared to reinvent yourself in the same way that you would reinvent the composition, restructure the materials. So here is some hard proven advice. As artists and designers, you have been taught to see, to observe what's happening to you in the outside world. And be informed. 
use that information in the best possible way and keep educating yourself. Keep observing. And with all of that, find a way to do something for someone else. The works of art you make are profound expressions of you to someone else. The designs that you create are solving problems for someone else. You're privileged now, so help someone with your skills and ideas. Associate your creativity with a cause. You've heard a lot about social distancing these days. Here's another equally relevant phrase, social entrepreneurship. What does that mean? It means engaging with a community, asking important questions with your art, seeking important answers with your designs. Acts of citizenship can be expressed as art and design. For example, if you see inequities among people, if you see intolerance and prejudice, if you see env environmental degradation, get involved in these causes through your art and design and do something about it. Make your lives count for something. Could be as a job or it could wind up being a volunteer opportunity. It's surprising how being a volunteer can open you up to a new job possibility, even career possibilities through people you've met as other volunteers. In conclusion, as a creative person, keep your vision strong, your head high, and your values clear. Forget the should. Stay open. Be inventive. And be flexible. Be ready to reinvent yourself while keeping the light of your creative flame lit. Good luck. Godspeed. And keep in touch. Let us know how you're doing. Thank you.